because most people are brainwashed when it comes to money. Go to school, get a job, work hard, pay your taxes, save money, get out of debt, buy a house, and invest in the stock market. Everybody who follows that program has been brainwashed. Money is debt. I use debt as money. And everybody thinks getting in debt is bad. Well, who told you that? I think the stock market is for losers. Why would you put money in the stock market when it's manipulated? That's what I think about. So I'm always watching the manipulation going on behind the scenes. That's what my brain is focusing on all the time. And I don't pay taxes. Question is, how is it I don't pay taxes? I can tell you. That's an, that's an important question because most people are so, most Romanians and most people in the United States cheat on their taxes because they hate taxes so much. But you don't have to cheat on taxes if you understood how money was working. And so everybody else is saying, oh, you should get out of debt. You know why? Because they don't question the hypnosis they're under. You've been hypnotized to work hard for money, to save it. The fractional reserve system prints it. So your job is to become a self-made millionaire and LifeVantage job is to help you get there. And my job is to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you the recipes and the formulas that you can use. And sometimes it just takes one choice. And remember, 87% of millionaires and billionaires are self-made. They started with nothing. And nobody's smarter than you, and nobody's better than you. Nobody's smarter than you, nobody's better than you. If somebody else can do it, especially with all the disadvantages that many people start off with, if someone else can do it, you can do it as well. That's the proof. Abraham Lincoln once said that some become wealthy is proof that all can become wealthy. It's just the very fact that a person does well, it's proof. They started with nothing and they became wealthy, well, there's the proof, you can do it as well. Just do the same things over and over again. Self-made millionaires, self-made billionaires spend 60 to 90 minutes every day studying their field, reading new material. Warren Buffett was just relegated from number three to number four, richest man in the world, and Warren Buffett reads 500 pages a day. Warren Buffett reads five to eight hours a day. Warren Buffett reads eight hours, eight, eight, seven days a week. He reads all the time, and he's one of the richest men in the history of the world. And he and his partners all say the same thing. You've got to read. Read and learn all the time. One idea can make you rich. So just keep flooding your mind with new ideas. What skills have you been developing? Have the skills that you've developed in your life so far made your life like a dream life? or like a nightmare life. And you don't want to have to think about the fact that you're not who you purport yourself to be. But then again, you're going to find out again anyway. You're going to see yourself every time you look in the mirror and you're going to know that you are not a person of your word. So, so you have to be a person of character because you can't be a person of confidence unless you are a person of character. People who don't have character don't have confidence unless they're sociopaths or psychopaths. And so, you, you're, here's the reality. You're not gonna build, become, build a million dollar business like that. You may build, you might build a six figure business like that. But when the people that paid you the money that helped you make the six figures found out that you couldn't deliver on the promise that you made to them for the money. The people that are being screwed today are the poor middle class because they work for money. You know, the banker friends, they're not working for money. They have money working for them. Yep. Right. Very big difference in mentality here. So we have, in America today, we have, you know, even Ray Dalio of Bridgewater, one of the biggest hedge fund guys in America, he's saying this gap between the rich and everybody else is too wide. Well, you could have seen that back in 1972, because the moment you corrupt money, the very thing that everybody works for, saves, counts on, they were screwed anyway. What keeps you up at night? Well, it's quite hard to run companies, especially car companies, I would say. It's quite challenging. The car business is the hardest one of all the things you do? Yes. Because it's a consumer-oriented business as opposed to like SpaceX and... Not that SpaceX, SpaceX is no walk in the park, but a car company, it's very difficult to keep a car company. You know, there's only two car companies in the history of American car companies that haven't gone bankrupt, and that's Ford and Tesla. I think certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else, 
um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment um, mm -hmm. because people are, tend, tend to, a natural human tendency is wishful thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit? And it's, it's, that, is a, it, that is a really difficult thing to, to tell you. Can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in, in your self-analysis. Uh, self uh, the very best businesses are the ones that earn a high rate of return on tangible assets and, and grow. But uh, uh, even ones that don't grow, uh, they earn a high return on tangible assets. And then, of course, if you don't pay too much, they can be a good investment. They're a good business to start with by the high returns. If you pay too much for them, you can turn a, a good business into a bad investment. But if you pay an appropriate price, uh, you can uh, you can do all right. Now, the, the big mistake which we made in the early years was to try and buy a bad business at a really cheap price. And the car business, the car dealership business, if run well, uh, can be a very good business. You, you have no receivables to speak of. Uh, you floor plan your inventory and you can you can lease your uh, real estate. We don't do that well on 95% of our real estate. So you can have very little capital actually invested in the business. And you do a, you do a large volume. Uh, Van Tile, which we bought, uh, has 78 dealerships. Uh, they'll average over $100, $100 million a dealership. So you can work on fairly narrow margins and still earn a high return on capital if you don't tie up much capital into $100 million of business. Banks earn on assets. They don't earn on net worth. Assets are the earning factors and they've changed the rules so that you have to have more net worth per per dollar of assets and obviously if you have more net worth per dollar of assets and you're earning a constant amount on assets your earnings on net worth go down now they they were ungodly profitable 15 years ago uh, or 10 years ago even uh, when they had high ratios of assets to uh, net worth and some of them even cheated in terms of having even more assets than the regulators would have allowed and you had the uh, you had these sieves, as they were called. Citigroup had a whole bunch of them. Uh, uh, so they were off balance sheet ways of even uh, controlling more assets. But all of that sort of thing has been terminated. And now now they're, uh, they've got much lower limits as to the assets to uh, net worth ratios. And the bigger the bank, the lower that ratio can be. So what was a very profitable business has been turned into a good business if executed well. But the higher the risk, the more you have to study. You know that, I know that. So if you're not gonna study, you're not gonna practice and all that, then you should do what Wall Street tells you to do. Buy, you know, 401ks, mutual funds, ETFs and all that. But that, that's where they're fake assets because they only make Wall Street or the city of London rich. Just watch where the cash is flowing. Follow the money. Yeah. It's not making the poor middle class rich. You know, all Wall Street in America has done is rip off the pensions because, you know, pensions are the biggest pool of money in America. And states like Kentucky, New Jersey, Illinois, California, Hawaii are going bankrupt because Wall Street went in and just sucked all the cash out of their pensions. So the school teachers like my dad, the firefighters and police officers, they have no retirement now. 